Heather Gray, the Lyme boss here. I'm a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and bioenergetic practitioner. And maybe you feel like crap. And that's why you need to listen to these high level experts that I have on my show every week, whether it's Lyme disease, mold toxicity, autoimmune, mental health issues, weight, cancer, you fill in the blank. I guarantee you, you will find something inspiring, entertaining, something that'll give you hope, practical advice that you can take home at the end of every episode. I highly thank you for joining us and you're going to just love this next guest. Yay. Let's welcome Gabe Golden to the show. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you. Appreciate you having me. I think this is what, like our third or fourth time I'm like, I started the call. I'm like, Gabe, are you sick of me yet? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> uh, you know, these are just such hard topics to talk about, but they need to be talked about. And that's why, you know, meeting someone like yourself, who's, you know, gone through hell and back a few times, you know, and then have been able to document your story, right? And put it out there to inspire, to bring awareness, to educate, like so many things. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Gabe. Like what what is your story? How did you get started in the, the chronic disease autoimmune world? And um, yeah, who's Gabe Golden? How I got started, boy, I, was, I didn't sign up for it. At least I didn't think I did, right? I, <laughs> I was like, are you sure? But maybe at the soul level, I, I, I might have. Um, now that I can have a perspective on it, but, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, I was 14, I was a active kid. Uh, I mean, I lived really, my whole identity was physical activity, um, swimming, soccer, martial arts, things like Sports. that Sports, for sure. Yeah. Nice. And it was, it was, uh, you know, you get a lot of validation from those rewards and, and, um, and then I, uh, I, I started getting a little bit of pain in my feet and my knees over a few weeks didn't really, it didn't really take very long to get so severe that I could barely get out of bed. And, um, and then it was my hands, almost every single joint in my body just swelled up. And, um, and of course my parents were really concerned and took me to Stanford and was diagnosed, um, back in 1985 or 86 with, when uh, he says swelled up, he's like, he's downplaying it. Like, like his knee was about five times the size of a regular knee and his, his knuckles were like, five times the size of a regular knuckle. Like this looked horrifically painful. Like describe, you know, what was that like? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, and it's an, it's an interesting name that autoimmune disease rheumatoid arthritis, because it's, you know, it implies arthritis. Um, most people associate arthritis with joint pain, but the kind that older people get and yes, there's some swelling and stuff, but it's, this is like an autoimmune reaction in the joints. So it's like fire and swelling and fluid in almost all your joints. So you just, you, they feel hot and swollen and tender and, you know, you can, you can hardly move them. Um, and so there's really not joint damage yet at that point. It's, it's just a fire that starts burning in the joints. And then eventually over many years of that, it does cause a lot of joint damage. And then you end up with both an autoimmune version of arthritis as well as traditional arthritis. Hmm. Absolutely insane. And so you were 13 when these symptoms started. Uh, yeah, just turned 14. And just turned 14. Um, yeah. And so that there was a major identity crisis and life change and a lot of uh, mainstream doctors and medications and really powerful immunosuppressant drugs like methotrexate, um, which is a chemotherapy drug. Um, you know, but, but over time they did suppress and pummel my immune system enough to give me some relief. Uh, and I went on kind of heavily medicated, but, uh, about a year and a half, two years later, I was functioning, able to play sports to a degree, but always very limited compared to what I could do before. And, um, I was getting regular blood tests almost every single week before I would go get my injection to make sure that the, you know, the, my liver was okay. My kidneys were okay. And, um, that the medicine and, wasn't killing you. Right. Right. <laughs> what those things, those, those tests detect essentially is that they, that you're not dying right away, but they don't really tell you that you are putting a lot of mileage on your organs by taking this medication and you're just pummeling your immune system constantly and certainly not treating the underlying cause. But, um, so it took, it took a lot of years of that. I, I, you know, steps forward and steps back, different medications, um, you know, they would stop working. You get on a different one, a different immunosuppressive drug. And then, um, into my early twenties, I mean, I'd always been really interested in health and nutrition and, um, you know, that all resonated with me. So I was already interested enough, but I started doing a lot of research on what could be the alternative you know, ways of approaching this and, um, dug up a ton of research and, you know, from herbs and diet and, 
antibiotic therapies or, you know, is this an infection? Is it leaky gut? Um, and brought all that into my doctor uh, at, at a time when I was actually experiencing a lot of side effects of the medications. And I was about 25, 26 years old. And I just um, figured he would be interested. You know, I figured, oh, he, he look at these things the way I did and say, wow, this is, I'm really curious. What else is this? And he didn't want anything to do with it. It was quackery to him. All we need to do is get you on more medications. And, um, and I just, you know, everything about that felt wrong. And so I hobbled out of the, the Kaiser hospital and, uh, was determined not to return and, uh, set me on another path, uh, which was, it's been a long road, but, but it was a good choice. Oh, absolutely. And so, you know, lighting the path, your documentary, you know, tell me a little bit, like, where did that come about? I mean, did you have a background in film? You know, what made you pick up a camera and go, I should start documenting this? Yeah, I had been to film school um, and was interested in a variety of aspects of film from production to acting to screenwriting. Um, had gotten to LA and was making short films with friends, was working in production as a production assistant. Uh, but that got pretty difficult as my symptoms got worse and side effects of the medications got worse. So all that kind of came to a screeching halt. And uh, as I dove into alternative medicine and different doctors and kind of going on this path, I started thinking, well, let's just film this just to see just to document it and see what it is what it is and maybe and i was kind of determined so i figured there was some way in which i was going to have a recipe for success that i could share with others and let's just show the trial and error of that so early on as you see in the film i i mean i'm a lot younger and um, we sh we did shoot some early footage of me where i had some initial success with um, things like ozone therapy ultraviolet light therapy antibiotics herbs you know dietary changes um, so, so I found a really nice doctor. This is back in 2002, um, who was pretty progressive at the time for, as an alternative medicine doctor. And uh, we had some initial successes. And then I kind of had symptoms come back and return. And I sort of spent a lot of years in this two steps forward, two steps back thing where um, a lot of my joint pain was gone, except for my knees were really bad. And uh, so that kind of put a pause on filming for a while. And then when I started it again, I started documenting other people who had been diagnosed with autoimmune, which led to kind of me being re-inspired to not only be determined that there was an answer or that we, to keep searching, uh, but it also uh, opened the door to Lyme disease and um, documenting Lyme as a, as a major, you know, a major issue uh, as much as autoimmune is because I found people who were misdiagnosed, you know, they had an autoimmune diagnosis and then they found out they had Lyme. Yeah, I had no idea that you had a Lyme component in your documentary. And so, you know, I was just like, do, 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 watching. And then all of a sudden, smack, got hit with this Lyme. You know, and, and, and Lyme documentaries are still kind of hard for me to watch because it really takes me back into the darkness, right, with that person. I mean, if you have a pulse, like, how could you not feel for these people? And then having your own story tied into it, you know, which I've done a lot of healing around, but it still, it still hurts. You know, so it was, you know, out of nowhere, I'm ugly crying on the couch for like 30 minutes straight. I was like, damn you, Gabe. No, <laughs> but no, it was, it was, it was awesome. But I wanted to go back to the the dance that you had talked about and that you showed in the documentary. I'm always curious as to why do you think that was? Why do you think you had some initial success and then to only go, you know, backslide for a little bit? Like, tell us a little bit about more about that. Yeah, that, I mean, that's really the question, you know, it's like, why, 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 you know, you do all these steps and then and you have all this progress and then you can slide backwards again. And I think, um, I think there's, you know, it's a complex, broad answer because healing is a broad experience and, and a unique journey for all of us, but it was also something that happened with all of us in the film. You know, we all get success. You change diet, detox, do different things. And all of a sudden you have a, a, an improvement in symptoms, but then over time, things kind of creep back up on you. And so from there, it's like, where, um, what, what aren't we addressing? And I think for us, we all learned that this, that the balancing the nervous system and treating the nervous system with treating emotions and trauma, and um, ultimately your current stresses in your life is, is by far the most important thing that you can do. I mean, you got to sleep, you got to eat right, you got to do all your foundational basics. But um, without that, you know, there's something in the nervous system that you're carrying, whether that's from your past or from your present. And your body is just in this 
fight or flight state. And even if it's not fully activated, it's just enough. I think that it, it compromises the ability to, for the, for yourself to really heal. And so you can be doing all these modalities and all these supplements and things, but if your body isn't going, well, I'm in a rest and digest space and I can utilize all these resources and let's do some healing, then it's just not going to happen. So I think that's where a lot of us, you know, get a little bit better. Then what do we do? We dive back into life and stress and work and we want to accomplish things and get out in the world. And then, you know, the body says, whoa, 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 I'm not done yet. You know, what are you doing? So um, I, think I was that's hoping that's answer. what you were going to say. I was hoping that's what you're going to say, because we hadn't actually talked about this before, you know, but I'm always curious of people's journey because that was my journey as well. Like I would, you know, I'm a functional practitioner. So I would clean up the diet, the lifestyle, the supplements, and then I would relapse and then I would do it again. And then I'd relapse. And I'm like, finally in 2020, it was like, all right, what am I missing? And it was that nervous system resetting piece. It was somatic experiencing work, breath work, you know, Dr. Gupta, you know, DRN and our DRNS, you know, Annie Hopper, you know, there's so many amazing things out there right now, but that's, that's what I was hoping you were going to get at because I'm always so curious because I saw in this film, you know, that, but I'm not sure that you touched upon that as much, you know, talking about that, that piece. So I was always curious. I also found, and maybe you have seen this as well, that athletes, people who are into music, you know, instruments, singing, you know, some sort of hobby that takes a lot of dedication, I find those folks have a typically better chance sometimes of getting better because they've had some sort of mental fortitude that they've had to learn how to, you know, flex, unlike some of the, you know, non-athletic, non-musical people. Like, have you seen a kind of a correlation like that with yourself? Because you talked about yourself being an athlete. Yeah, I think it's, that's a, that's an interesting question. I think having um, determination and, it, it, you know, and achieved other things and, and made, you know, hit certain marks. I think that gives you a certain resilience or a certain ability to, to believe in, in progress overall. Um, this, you know, this, this kind of challenge is it's, it's a day-to-day -day thing that can really, you, you have to have, I think, a faith in the ability to heal, but also not be so attached to it as, you know, that that's all you do. Because then, you know, if, if all you're doing is 10 things every day to heal, and if you feel like you missed one and that you failed, then you're telling your body that you're not there yet. And so there's this kind of, this dance of, you know, how do I enjoy my life? How do I, how can I really be present and enjoy what I've got that I can work with now, even if I'm in pain or if I'm not all the way better, still making progress, learning new things about what might help. Um, and and not being so attached to getting on Dr. Google every day and just like obsessed with, well, what is the net, what is the answer? <laughs> and, you know, because it's, it's, it, I think it's, it, you can get in your own way really easily. And certain, some of us more than others, you know, who are really dedicated and believe in it and try. And um, I think that's something that, you know, I saw in the film as well with myself and other people, we, we get so determined and then it, we also make the healing journey stressful. And so, um, that's where the, the managing your emotions and meditation and time in nature and relaxing, doing things that, you know, are good for you, but also just things you enjoy. Like even you mentioned music, I know it was a different context, but like there's, is there a point where that you get in, in this journey that even if you're still in pain and you still believe there's answers out there, but you have an hour do you get on Google or, or listen to another podcast about health or do you pick up a guitar and just relax and play guitar or do something you love to do? And I think there really has to be those times when you just let go and continue to live your life and tell your nervous system, everything's okay. We can still do stuff that we enjoy. We can still laugh. We can still take a hot bath. We can still be with friends or animals, or if we can go for a walk or sit in the sunshine or deep breathe or, you know, those those are things that tell your system everything is okay. And that is really underrated in its ability to nurture healing. 110%. And it's funny how much I'm finding out that that also plays into building a business, right? Because as an entrepreneur type A personality, I've found myself grind, 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 grind to where it wasn't fun anymore. And then symptoms started coming back. And, you know, my coach was like, Heather, if money was no object, what would you be doing right now? 
you know, and I was like, well, I wouldn't be working on this spreadsheet. That's for damn sure. You know, I'd be going for a walk out in the sunshine or I'd be cranking up the music and dancing around the uh, living room like an idiot, you know, like, you know, blowing off some steam. And so finding that balance, right, whether it's healing or building a business or whatever it is, like we didn't come to this earth to just grind and be miserable. Like, no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, um, think, go what's ahead. the saying? Someone said uh, it's, it's kind of kind of crass, but that life is not a shit eating contest. <laughs> was, oh, my God. I would have won that. <laughs> and I would. And I'm like, eat your shit sandwich and smile, you know, and it's hard to it's hard to. And then I would get this like martyr. Like He was such a it was such a horrible um, pattern that I had gotten into. Um, but, I, you know, thank God. I, I just don't anymore. You know, I just recently turned 46 and I, I vowed I am not going to go into the next 40 years carrying the same stress, the same anxiety, the same worry that I've carried almost all my life. And it's gotten me nowhere. You know, if worrying about your problems, worrying about your health, right, worrying about money worked by now, it would have worked by now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, this leads to, you know, and it's a bigger, even a bigger conversation, but I think that's where doing those things that you love to do that nurture you that help heal you can kind of be things you enjoy but there can be a, an open door to a spiritual journey a, a more spiritual relationship with yourself your true nature the divine whatever but that component is a huge piece for healing i think absolutely so tell us what are some of your favorite hobbies gabe um i love i mean i love i love being outside i love nature i love I live near the ocean. I love walking on the beach. I love meditation. Um, uh, I think just being with friends is, in community is a huge piece, whether that's really close friends and family that you have an opportunity to just dine with as often as possible or connect with, or just this community, you know, like the, what you've built or um, the people that I've encountered in my my journey that I've kept in touch with. And sometimes whether you meet in person or online, having that connection and nurturing each other and encouraging each other is just huge. And for so many years, I was isolated. I didn't want to advertise that I had my condition. I didn't want to be seen as different or, you know, or, or really make a thing out of it. And as soon as I did, there were so many people that were immediately like, oh, I, I have that too, or I know someone who's got that, or you should talk to so-and-so. And then as soon as you connect, you realize, wow, we're all like, we're all in this together. We need to, we need to, support each other and that so that's something that's something i really like oh, absolutely i was shocked that uh you know the eclipse happened this week there's a lot of energy i'm always very sensitive to the stuff that's kind of going on you know and as a entrepreneur I was running up against some things and i you know posted it in in facebook and it was amazing i had like 65 other entrepreneurs going oh my god i've experienced the same thing and oh my gosh don't give up you know keep it up you know and it was just it was just beautiful because so many people often will you know talk bad about social media but i think used you know correctly it can be this beautiful space of community especially folks who feel isolated who can't get out because of you know chronic illness or they're a solopreneur that works from home you know and uh you know i i just think it's beautiful and connection is i mean they're, they're starting to show all the research about lack of community being one of the number one causes for you know addiction and you know all these things like we are social creatures and somehow along the line we have forgotten that for sure. Yeah. I, it's a huge, huge piece. And and in person, if you can, as much right. as you can, but online is, is, I mean, at least we have that, that option now. Absolutely. Hey, let's take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Um, and we'll dive deeper into lighting the path. We'll talk about more of the, the Lyme connection and uh, yeah, some more fun stuff. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey there. I used to not be able to drink coffee. I always reacted to it horribly. It hurt my stomach. It made me over jittery and would inflame me and cause histamine issues. But not anymore. Not that I've since I started drinking Danger Coffee by Dave Asprey. It's his next, next level of coffees. He came out with Bulletproof 
and now this is the next level up. So it is mold free, toxin free, and he infuses it with minerals and electrolytes. So unlike other coffees, they can actually pull minerals and electrolytes from your system for being, because you're it's too acidic. It actually helps replenish those. And so I don't react to it at all. I get to have my bulletproof coffee with my MTC oil and my grass fed butter. And I don't get the jitters, I don't get the crashes, and I love how focused and energized it makes me feel. Again, non-toxic, mold-free, infused with minerals and electrolytes. I absolutely love Danger Coffee. Make sure to check out my website, thelimeboss.com. Go to the resource section and get yours. There's a new word for wellness, Nikki. Nikki, the bioenergetic wearable designed to help you feel better and perform better. Other wearables just track how you're doing. Nikki is about helping you do better. Nikki takes bioenergetic frequency science to a new level and onto your wrist. Nikki technology carries frequencies into the body to organize and optimize the cellular network, the trillions of cells that communicate by light and frequencies to keep us alive and feeling our best. Physical and mental trauma can upset cellular communication, and Nikki is designed to help restore it. Touch the Nikki screen to choose the frequency you want for what you want to do and how you want to feel. Low energy? Touch energy for a boost. Stressed out? Stress and anxiety is to calm you down. Aches and pains? Choose Nikki Pain. Nikki has frequency sets intended to fight allergies, strengthen immunity, and keep viruses and bacteria at bay. If you're going on a trip and want to arrive fresh and ready to enjoy your vacation, touch travel. And if you want to wake up ready to go, Nikki Nighttime is for overcoming daytime trauma while you sleep. Every Nikki comes loaded with a full inventory of frequency sets, including pain, energy, travel, immune, stress and anxiety, viruses and bacteria, allergies, insomnia, daytime bundles, nighttime bundles. Nikki puts a personal wellness center in your hands and on your wrist. Make sure to go to my website, thelimeboss.com, and you'll find Nikki on the resource section. Make sure to use the Lime Boss for a 10% off discount. Stay tuned. Awesome. Welcome back. Hey, so how long did it take, you know, all together to get this uh, documentary out into the world? And then how also did you end up with that line piece in it? I started filming myself about, like I said, about 2002 and did it, you know, a year and a half, two years of filming there and then took a long break for five or six years, started again, well, I think 2010 and, and we filmed on and off, you know, 2014, 2016 at different points. And then, um, but when I, when I started filming probably about 2012, I started documenting other people. And one of the uh, women that I documented in the film who had been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis was in my support group for autoimmune. And then shortly after she uh, realized she was diagnosed with Lyme disease as well. And so she was one of those, the few people in the group that just really wanted to listen and okay what have you learned okay i'm going to take that and i'm going to run with it and she really like went very dedicated into her own research and that was inspiring to me and when she, that would you know sort of led me into this the lime world and what was going on there and and then ultimately we um she found a great doctor uh biological medicine uh, uh clinic in scottsdale arizona called the biomed center and we went there on her first visit and i went to film and uh, the incredible diagnostics they have um, really gave us hope that that we were at a at a, a whole nother level of naturopathic medicine or integrative medicine because we both had been to lots of places and tried lots of things, and now we were at a place that had incredible holistic um, therapies, but combined with incredible technology. And, and you know, European biological medicine has always been way ahead of I think a lot of American mainstream medicine. So that was the the beginning of of really both I would say that both of our journeys um, and then ultimately another person in the film ends up there as well, and so getting those advanced diagnostics uh, gave us 
our each individual, you know, breakdown of where were, where were we weak? Was it our lymphatic system, endocrine system, digestive system, you know, all the different systems that need to be tested that we ignore in mainstream medicine and getting a full analysis of that and where to prioritize, where do we start? Uh, having a doctor, uh, Dr. Jeff Drobot um, is, is an amazing physician who just, who just really can prioritize where, what your body can handle. We're not going to do a thousand things at once. We're just going to give you, we're going to look at what's step one. We'll know that because we've got good diagnostics and we'll go from there. Uh, and then we'll optimize your immune system ultimately and all your systems so that whatever you're dealing with, you can your body will will handle it better. Of course, if you have Lyme as opposed to maybe something else, that will be a very customized protocol that could include maybe more ozone therapy or things that treat infection more uh, than something that might be you know designed to to do something else for cancer or something. So you mentioned German biological medicine. Can you explain a little bit more about what that is? Yeah, I mean they, they refer to it often as European biological medicine, which just has been. Um, uh, one of the early clinics is in Switzerland and um, called the Paracelsus Clinic. And in fact, uh, one of the women in the film goes to the Paracelsus Clinic first uh, and then comes home with this, a really aggressive protocol uh, where, you know, they, they do all of the, they do hyperthermia therapy. They do all of these advanced diagnostics looking at, you know, your lymphatic and um, uh, of course, looking at all your blood work, hormones, things like that. But they, have, they use a lot of homeopathic remedies and a lot of uh, those can be IV therapies and they give you a whole home protocol. Hard to do though when your doctor's in Europe and you're in the United States and you're trying to facilitate all this and you you see in the film, you know, this is a, a, a Laney in the film and her husband Grant is trying to give her an IV and, you know, they're trying to continue this protocol. So it, it presents challenges for sure. So it was great when we found, uh, she found uh, the doctor here in Arizona that offered that same thing and was able to sort of do it, not just here in the States, but also simplify um, the process a little bit. Well, that's incredible. So you had talked a little bit about diet in the beginning. I'm just always curious as to what did you find out about diet and what has worked for you? You know, as a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, food is really my jam. And I find that there's so much misinformation out there and it's sad how, you know, humans are like the only mammals that have to be, you know, retaught on what is healthy for us to eat. Like you don't see a, a cow walking around in the pasture confused on what to eat. So, you know, it's still just fascinating. And also the fact that people can't, they don't correlate, right? They, they, they can't see that, you know, I was talking to a girl yesterday. She's like, my husband used to drink two gallons of milk a day and then spend, you know, an hour on the toilet every day and his joints hurt. And it took him 15 years correlate that and put that together. So I'm always, I'm always fascinated what a person's diet diet journey looks like. So, you know, what does your diet look like these days? I, I, I predominantly paleo, I suppose is the best way, but I, um, you know, the, all of these approaches have their strengths and their weaknesses. When I first dove into alternative medicine, you know, and back in 2002 and I wanted to detox and cleanse. And I was also really concerned about the factory farms and all, you know, the, the quality of the meat. And so I, I went vegan. Um, and my doctor at the time had done a metabolic typing test on me and actually determined that I needed to have a fair amount of animal protein. Uh, were you a fast oxidizer? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so I, but I, I was like, well, okay, I'll do this version of his diet, but I'm going to do it vegan, you know? And, um, well, that, I mean, within three months I was, I'm already a pretty lean guy. I was, I lost another 30 pounds like of muscle just, and I was just wasting away. <laughs> I, went, oh, so no. I, I was so determined, you know, like I was like determined. I thought, well, maybe this is all part of the cleansing. And he said, what are you doing? He said, you, your body needs amino acids that come from animal proteins predominantly. He said, doesn't mean you, you don't need to eat vegetables and you, you do, but he said, your body's designed to build itself from animal protein and you're going to need to eat animal protein. Um, he said, how do you feel, you know, as far as energy and libido? And I said, I felt terrible. He said, well, let's test your testosterone. I'll bet that your testosterone's, you know, in the dirt. Yeah. And sure <laughs> enough, it was like, I was 90, you know? Oh. And I mean, he's, he said, you know, you can't go on like this. And so that, that is missing a lot in the conversation when you hear a lot of people promoting vegan diets and, 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 I get it. Like 
you know, even Heat said sometimes vegan diets work really well for certain people with certain makeups. They they do yep. great. They thrive. And some people need a little animal protein. And I happen to be one that needs it every day. And I and I really felt better by doing that. So of course my hormones was returned and everything. And but I mean my diets I do stay pretty consistent in terms of clean, gluten free. I don't like soy. I stay away from soy. Always always reacted to soy the same way I would gluten, which is just more joint pain. Um, even though I could tolerate it digestively. I no refined sugars, you know, but, um, I, I'm also not afraid of carbohydrates. I think fruit and certain carbs are really good, especially if you're fairly active. Um, and especially when you're, when your metabolism is balanced, um, whether, you know, where you can kind of shift, like if you can intermittent fast without suffering symptoms, <laughs> you know, then you know that your body's pretty well adapted. But if you feel really miserable when you fast, your body's not there yet. And you probably want to tailored down over time, your carbohydrate intake, eat, eat more fat, kind of lean keto to the point where maybe you do keto for a week or two, just to kind of get fat adapted and retrain your body a little bit. But I mean, it's all balanced and it's also really, what are you going to do on a consistent basis? That's going to determine, you know, what is the optimal diet for you? Because food is comfort and it's very personal and we all, we all want to enjoy our food. Um, but I think when you make that transition, as you know, you know, you make the transition, then you crave good food and you learn to cook good food. And it's nice to actually enjoy food that, you know, is good for you. Absolutely. That's why I have a cooking video series on my website. You know, it's just, it's sad. So you brought up confinement animals. Thank you. Cause you know, I, it's part of the reason it, where I live is not very woke, <laughs> unfortunately. So all the restaurants are confinement animals, right? So I, I won't eat meat from a, a restaurant from confinement animals. It is, it's sadness, it's torture, it's abuse, it's dirty, you know, what they feed them, it's, it's illness, it's inflammatory, it's so many things. You know, so I have a local farmer that I work with and I get a quarter of beef, I get a quarter of bison and I put them in my chest freezer. I have another farmer that I work with that I actually help process the chickens and the turkeys. I know how he feeds them, you know, I'm with them on their last day and I'm blessing them as they go. And then I have another farmer who, uh, man, pasture raised pork, he's actually slaughtering them in their sleep, you know, to keep that stress hormone down. You know, it, it, it makes a freaking difference, you know. So for those of you out there who are like, but the animals, I get that. I'm right there with you. But I am also a fast oxidizer. I'm an O negative and I would absolutely crash and burn if I didn't have meat get the right kind of meat, get the right kind of eggs, you know, even some people who can handle dairy, you know, raw dairy from grass fed animals can be right. really phenomenal for you. I don't have the genes to break down dairy. So sadly I am gluten-free dairy free, but I was at this biohacking conference this weekend and I'm listening to these doctors up on stage talking about moderation and even with wheat and blah, 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 blah. And I just wanted to have my head explode. Cause it's like, obviously you're not working with the chronic autoimmune sick people like I do, because there really is no moderation with certain kinds of food, right? They just cause right. so much inflammation, so much leaky gut. And I think it's just a really uh, bad information that they're putting out there. So I was really happy that we're on the same page. <laughs> I kind of knew we would be, but thank you for that. Cause yeah, you really, it, and it is, it's like you said, little increments every day. It's what you do every day that add up to big wins. Um, and it doesn't have to be hard and it doesn't have to be tasteless. You know, I love Dr. Tom O'Brien, you know, he's like, have a root vegetable, a leafy green and a protein, you know, and that is a beautiful plate and, yeah. you know, great for the gut, you know, it helps feed the gut with all the good stuff. You know, if your gut's a garden, you know, you gotta, you gotta feed it with all these different things. For so sure. that's awesome. That's awesome. And he's, he's a wonderful uh, resource. I I'll plug him. He's in my film and you've interviewed. Oh, him, that's you know, right. I forgot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh he's yeah. Amazing. He's amazing. He is amazing. And, and, and I brought him up to that chiropractor who was spouting that crap and he was like, not a fan. And so right there, I kind of knew, I was like, all right, I need to just stop talking to this dude. Like, he don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to get anywhere with him, but it's just heartbreaking to have someone like that on a stage, you know, moderation. And it's like, no, there's no moderation when it comes to poison. Right. And people with these autoimmune processes, this is poison. Sure. So, if you keep feeding those triggers in, I mean, and, and, and then you take a break and you feel better. And then, you know, you, you, you take one in again, it just lights that fire. And for some people it can really light the fire again and send you on a two, three month flare up. And so it's just not, it's not worth it to promote that. I personally got to a point where I can, I could cheat a little here and there. And I, 
could get away with it because I got better, you know, and built a really good resiliency, I think. But I, I realized I was really rolling the dice. So I just don't, I don't do that, you know, very often at all. Wheat, wheat and dairy are like the two that I just don't mess around with because they, I just, yeah, no. <laughs> um, so when it came to the documentary, you know, you finally get it out there you know, what was some of the responses that you got from people? I told you, you know, it made me ugly cry and, you know, kind of took me to a funky place. Like, what are some of the responses that you've gotten from people about watching your, watching your, watch, watching your documentary? It, it feels so good when people reach out and, and write me a note and just say that it, that they connected with the authenticity of it because it shows the trial and error. You know, this is not just a real clean easy recipe for success. Here's what you do. Get, take some acupuncture and change your diet and you'll be great. You know, I mean, it's healing's a, a very unique journey. We're very complex beings. And that's part of uh, what I think uh, all of us, you know, learn on any, on any healing journey is, the, is all the layers of who we are and, and how this journey informs like who we are and, and, and forces you to look at why, why, why we might be sick, but also like, are we living an optimal life? And so people write and, and just, they just connect to, I think to that aspect of it, they feel, feel that they're not alone. Um, and they also hopefully get a lot of really good information because I tried to sprinkle in, you know, the, the key, uh, most in, important lessons that, that we learned along the way within the stories of the film. And so you, as you see us kind of go through the trial and error and try this and try that, and that failed and this kind of worked and that sort of worked more better and Hey, add those things together. And, you know, it, it all kind of, um, coalesced into some, some nice endings to the film, which was good. Um, but, um, a lot of people also connect with the idea that, the spiritual journey or the inner journey is a huge piece as well. And I think even though that's one whole nother layer to explore, if you're on the healing journey, I think it resonates with people and really is kind of trending now because people connect to that and go, Oh yeah, maybe it isn't all just diet. And yes, it's, there's diet and environmental toxins and these are all really relevant. But if so many of people have done that and then, and gotten results, but not gotten all the way there or you know and then it's like what is this missing piece so that whole realm of emotional work and as you see in the film i worked with some really wonderful somatic practitioners and somatic experiencing and interviewed peter levine and other um you know other great therapists who i really think are helping us to to sort of unravel the barriers that we um we have between us and whatever we're still holding on to from childhood or or current stresses that we're not dealing with. And, and it, that seems to be a big piece that people connect with as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, I talk quite often about the gifts of Lyme and then I get some hate mail, <laughs> you know, because people just aren't there yet. You know, and I wasn't there yet in the beginning either, you know, after being sick for 27 years and being gaslit my whole life, you know, when I finally got that diagnosis, it was like, I got a golden ticket. And I kind of worn that by like, by, a, you know, a cloak of honor and, it wasn't until I took that cloak off and I stopped identifying with my disease. Right. And then started looking at it in a different point. And I just pointed this out with a client today. It's like, look at the gifts, right? Like, would you ever have learned to take care of yourself in this way to slow down? You know, you've got young kids, like, could you imagine what you're preventing them for getting as they get older because of this new information that you would not have gotten if you wouldn't have contracted this disease? And he's like, Oh, never thought of it that way. Right. Yeah. And you, and you ultimately, as you learn what's healthy for you and you learn what's healthy for your kids and your family, you're kind of hopefully spreading that message uh, gently because not everyone receives it real well, but you know, you inspire by the way you do things. And then ultimately where you're choosing to buy and so products you're supporting modalities you're supporting um, ways of living in the world. That's just more sustainable for all of us, you know, as we stay away from and re literally reject the the meat from factory farms and we go a different direction it it you know and i think i even say this in a film when i'm ranting at some point but it's like you know if if we don't buy it and we don't support it they can't produce it they can try but they're going to ultimately they have to we do have control and uh, we have a lot more power than we realize and and you know you just you just have to really act on that and and that knowledge of healing and optimization and health is a great place to to start 
Can I get an amen? <laughs> That's awesome. Absolutely. You know, some people think I'm crazy because I go to the farmer's market and I'm dealing here and then I go here and I go here. And, you know, my grocery trip is a lot different than most people's. And I wouldn't do it any other way because I'm now living a life where I am traveling and teaching and speaking and, you know, have the energy, have the bandwidth, have the brain, you know, to do all these things, to be with my friends. I'm taking a stand-up comedy class and next week we have our showcase. Like, Never in a million years. And and that's why I do it is because I'm trying to change the world with my dollar, right? I, I'm trying to take it out of the hands of, of the torture and the abuse of the animals and put it in the hands of the farmers who are doing things right. Um, it's a little bit more work. Sometimes it's a little bit more money, but I think at the end of the day, it's 110 times worth it. Oh, for so, sure. And you have an amazing, that gives you an amazing connection to your food and you realize where it's coming from. And you're supporting those those farmers and food producers. So that's fantastic. And you're working on making the world laugh. So, I mean, what's better than that? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so we're about ready to wrap up here. What any, got any final thoughts or, or burning nuggets that you're like, ah, I need the world to know this? Hmm. Hmm. You know, I think a huge piece of the healing journey is... Um, kind of tapping into your your true nature in whatever way you can. And a lot of us do that through spiritual work or mentors, meditation. What I've learned is that I think a big piece was missing was just this self-love component and mm -hmm. acceptance of the self, um, acknowledging that, you know, your challenges that you're facing, um, uh, you take responsibility, but don't, don't blame yourself for what you're going through. You know, when you have pain, when you're dealing with severe pain, whatever that cause is, it's easy to judge your body and feel separate from your body and feel like, why is my body rejecting me or doing this to me? Um, and remember that, you know, you are your body. And if you can engineer or access, I should say, access that love from within, as you get to know this sort of deeper, true nature, whatever your soul is saying to you, you find there's a, there's a message there of, of able, you're able to send love to your body and listen to the pain rather than trying to conquer it, you know, understand it if you can, rather than just seeking a way out. And I know that's a tough thing to do. And when you're in pain, I've been there, but that, that message, if you can um, send that message to yourself as much as you can, that nurture yourself, you know, yes, you got to take the steps to get well and do eat right and take and learn what you need to learn. And that's why it's great to have resources like you or my, my film, you know, you can watch it for free. You can, and then you can, you get access to all these other episodes that are, um, that are individual deep dives, like with Dr. Tom O'Brien and talking about the nutrition and the microbiome and how you optimize it and how you test it and things like that are great, but, um, just take one step at a time, you know, be patient with yourself and, and, um, and remember that the journey of healing is, is it's not just like a destination. It's, it's, you're, it's going to be a gradual unfolding. And so nurture yourself along the way, because if you're just kind of waiting and waiting and waiting to get well, I think that sends the wrong message. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Mic drop on Gabe. Thank you. <laughs> that was a beautiful way to wrap that up. I, I absolutely amazing. So where can people find you and where can people watch the documentary for free? Oh, thank you. Um, you can go to lightingthepathfilm.com, lightingthepathfilm.com, and just uh, put in your email. It only goes to me, and uh, you'll automatically get free access to the film. And every day you'll get a new email for five days. You'll get a new email with a couple of additional episodes if you want to check them out. Absolutely amazing. Gabe, thank you for doing everything that you do and being such a bright light in this world. Um, I so appreciate you, and I'm just so blessed to have you in my life. I'm loving this uh, relationship, the friendship, the camaraderie, like everything that you're doing. Like, I'm just, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. Oh, thank you, Heather. Much Absolutely. appreciated. Everybody else, make sure to have a healthy day and stay tuned. Make sure to share the love, like, subscribe, and share. This information is potentially life-saving. Don't keep it to yourself. Make sure to help spread this message. And if you want to experience less pain, a have a brain that works and have more energy, it starts in the kitchen. Download my free eight video cooking series, Real Cooking for Real Life. No more excuses, take charge of your health. Start with the free video series at www.thelimeboss.com. That's L-Y-M-E. 
Thank you. Have a blessed day.